Hello everybody and welcome to VFR today. We are here at West Yellowstone Airport. We're going to be going through a sim pilot's guide to Yellowstone National Park. So we are here just west of the um, of the National Park at Yellowstone at this really cool freeware scenery available on flightsim.to by Windhover. You've got some custom um, signage, custom terminal here. And we've got our trusty Pilatus PC-6 float plane variant parked out on the ramp where someone's biz jet probably should be. So we're going to head on out to it, get all fired up, and um, yeah, we'll start exploring Yellowstone. So before we get started into details about the park, big disclaimer, this is not for real-world flight planning in any way, shape, or form. And for sim pilot flight planning, it should be taken with a couple grains of salt. So Yellowstone National Park, one of the oldest national parks in the U.S. park system, created on March 1st, 1872, mostly in the state of Wyoming. There's a little bit in Idaho and a little bit in Montana, about 3,000 square miles, and was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1978. We are working with two mods today. Uh, we have Guidance Yellowstone Landscape and Camping Mod, and we have Wind Hover's um, Yellow West Yellowstone Airport Mod, K-E-W-Y-S. So both of those are available on flightsim.to. I will link them in the description below. Uh, we're going to be landing. We're here at Yellow, West Yellowstone. We're going to be landing at one of the campsites in Guidance Yellowstone mod out on in an island in Lake Yellowstone, which is why we're bringing the float plane version. So to start our sim pilot's guide to Yellowstone National Park, let's take a quick second here at the chart table and look at what we're dealing with. Yellowstone National Park is just about here in the northwestern United States, uh, a couple hours northwest of Salt Lake City, which is down here, um, Denver International Airport out here, and obviously this is California. Uh, Boise, Idaho is right um, here, kind of up the Snake River Valley. So Yellowstone is a, basically a squarish national park. This is the official park map with chunks in Idaho, Montana, but mostly it's located in the U.S. state of Wyoming. There are entrances kind of on each side of the park, the west entrance, north entrance, northeast, east, and south. Uh, and there's quite a bit of seasonality in some of these roads and where you can actually go in the park. A lot of it shuts down for the winter because, as you might imagine, at this altitude in this part of the United States, you get a lot of snow, a lot of ice, a lot of winter weather. So it's very seasonal. October, or really spring and summer, are going to be your biggest um, time periods. We'll talk about that a little more in weather. Squarish Park, high geothermal activity. Um, you've got geysers kind of all around this uh, this area, obviously. Yellowstone's fairly famous for having a, kind of a super volcano below it. And um, the map, park map shows the approximate caldera boundary of that. And there's some of those some of those geological features you can see while you're flying through it. So going back to the VFR chart, uh, Yellowstone is basically surrounded by mountains on all three sides. You're looking at this kind of dotted air, square area. West Yellowstone Airport out here uh, is the one we're flying out of. It's just across the, the border in Montana and just across the park boundary. Now you notice there are mountains kind of on either side of it. It's almost like a horseshoe around the Yellowstone Plateau with Yellowstone Lake. Uh, it's kind of in the center and southeast of the park. And it's the largest high elevation lake, that is a lake above 7,000 feet, in North America. You're going to be dealing with really a floor of about 8,000 feet, but there's a lot of hills and a lot of mountains and a lot of small ridges throughout. So you've got to be looking out the window to see where you are if you're flying VFR through here. A lot of terrain. And uh, yeah, it'll vary between really 7,000 and 13,000 feet at some of these high peaks out in the east. Now, mountain ranges, again, surround the park. We have the Madison Range out in the west, the Gallatin Range out to the northwest, um, the Beartooth Range in the north, the Absaroka Range in kind of the east-northeast, and then the Teton Range down to the south. Grand Teton National Park in Jackson Hole, which is one of, another popular airport to fly into, is uh, just south of the park. It really basically butts up right against it, and those are the Grand Tetons. Now you'll see it also spills out kind of into the Snake River Valley, which runs again up the Snake River out towards Boise, Idaho, if you're looking for some lower lands. Uh, Idaho Falls, kind of right here, KIDA is one airport you could go to. The Yellowstone River is another big feature. It's going to carve a lot of the interesting stuff we're going to see. Uh, it flows off the Yellowstone, off Lake, off, it flows off Yellowstone Lake, 
kind of up to the north and then it cuts the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. And if you want to go to Bozeman, Montana, you're going to basically follow the River Valley cut by the Yellowstone River until you hit Bozeman Pass up here, and that'll be KPZN Bozeman there. Um, several other peaks, uh, in particular Mount Washburn, which is kind of here along the Yellowstone River. That's a, a very common fire lookout post and uh, observation area for the whole park. Now, as far as weather, it varies by elevation, but it can snow year-round, especially at the high altitudes around the park. Often it will be 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer with really low humidity, but still can get very cold at night. So if you're flying at night, uh, I'll be cognizant of your icing procedures. Frequent summer thunderstorms. Uh, and again, the winds are generally going to be out of the west at an average of 7 knots. With a smaller portion out of the east-southeast, I'll put up a graphic that kind of shows the distribution of them. This is from basically METAR reports from the year 2021. So uh, 2021, the majority of the time the wind was out of the, uh, the majority of the times recorded wind was out of the west around 260 to 300, an average of seven knots. And then east, southeast for a, a smaller chunk, but still a significant chunk of the winds reported by METAR. All right, so we're here holding short of runway 19. We're going to take off here and make a left-hand turn, and then we're going to follow the road in towards the West Yellowstone entrance. All right, so we're in the air flying along the Madison River in towards the west entrance to Yellowstone National Park, just over this little mountain ridge here. Now, flying into Yellowstone, you've got a few options. Uh, locally, you have uh, obviously West Yellowstone, where we, um, where we have just flown out of. Some cool freeware scenery for it, and you're probably five minutes away from it in any plane. Now, on the other side of the mountains, on the uh, eastern side, there's another airport, Yellowstone Regional, that you can fly out of. Uh, and then there's a small strip, uh, S-29 uh, Gardenia, I think. We'll see if that's the Montana pronunciation. But um, that's kind of on the north side on your way to Bozeman. But that's a small single strip uh, over north. If you're looking for something larger but a little less local, you want to fly um, on a big jet into somewhere close to Yellowstone, you have Jackson Hole kind of to the south off uh, our right. That's actually inside of Grand Teton National Park, uh, which is just south of Yellowstone, probably a half hour flight from here. We also have Bozeman up to the north, which is one well, we'll kind of go up that way, but it's, if you follow the Yellowstone River north out of the park, you'll head up towards Bozeman, and they have Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport, 40 minute flight or so, depending on what airplane you're in. If you're looking for other cities, uh, Billings, Montana is also kind of a similar distance, but it's not quite as easy to get through around the terrain, but if that's not a factor to you, Billings, and then Boise, if you basically go behind us along the Snake River out to the west, you'll eventually hit Boise. Finally, if you're looking for your major international airports, the big ones are going to be Denver, and really Salt Lake City is probably the closest. It's about an hour, two hour flight again, depending on what airplane you're in. I like to fly up from Salt Lake City through Grand Teton, maybe a stop at Jackson Hole, and then on to Yellowstone. So just off our nose now, we're kind of entering geyser territory at Yellowstone. If you So looking at the map, 
we are kind of entering this uh, port geyser, this area of high geyser activity. Uh, there's a bunch of them around us, and uh, if we pull back off of the map, you can see it off our nose. This includes Grand Prismatic Geyser, which is one of the most photographed things in the park. If you see a very colorful hot spring with a bunch of rainbow colors, that would be Grand Prismatic Spring. Also, one of the campsites just off our nose, uh, down by the river, will kind of get a little bit lower and take a bit of a pass at it. But right by that island, uh, there's a tent and a fire. So if you want to land, either... Um, I don't know if the river is big enough, but if you want to land alongside it and take a camping trip, that's an option for you too. As we see Grand Prismatic Spring off our um, off our left. Now coming around the bend, the site of Old Faithful Geyser. Um, this is the probably the most famous geyser in the park. It uh, erupts about every 90 minutes and can shoot water up to 180 feet fairly regularly. And that's not the only geyser, uh, certainly, in in the area. There are many, many geysers uh, around this area. You can actually check out live streams of them on the National Park Service website in Yellowstone. So we're now going to track back to the east, towards Yellowstone Lake. And we will fly along the lake and probably go in for a landing at one of the other campsites installed by the mod. Then we'll continue on to the north and follow the Yellowstone River up north uh, towards... The way out to Bozeman and Mammoth Springs, and we'll come on back down and uh, head back to Yellowstone. All right, so we're coming out above Lake Yellowstone now. Well, the, it is the largest high elevation lake that's above 7,000 feet in North America. We've got all sorts of stuff you can do around here, wildlife, camping, um, boating, fishing, all sorts of um, fun events uh, along Lake Yellowstone. It's a fun place to explore. It really dominates kind of the south, central, eastern portion of the park. There will be a lot of cabins around. We're all going to be landing at a campsite out on one of these islands, uh, included from Guidance Yellowstone mod. All right, so we've done our low pass over the campsite. I am going to make a hard right turn around. We're going to kind of land uh, alongside the island and uh, scoot on up to the campsite. You can see it just off our nose, that kind of bright green patch. We'll give it flaps. In this plane, we do have a reverser, so that's going to be our best bet to land to uh, stop the plane on the water.
All right, so welcome to the campsite. This it's just little touches like this too that make um, this kind of thing really fun. There, are, yeah, there's another one up by Firehole um, River by Grand Prismatic Spring that's a little easier to get into if you're in a in a wheeled airplane, but a float plane has no trouble getting in here at all. So we're going to keep on trucking up north towards the Yellowstone River, and we're going to fly kind of north and around towards um, Mammoth Springs before we head back to base. All right, so here's the Yellowstone River. We're going to keep following this basically to the north and uh, see where it takes us. So we're coming up on the falls of the Yellowstone. These are some really massive waterfalls um, as the Yellowstone River changes elevation and heads towards the uh, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, which is, of course, right in front of us. So these are really um, spectacular waterfalls. We're going to be flying probably up the wrong way. As you can see just here, uh, those massive waterfalls, you can see the parking lots, where people come to see them. Now right in front of us is the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. A canyon carved by the Yellowstone as it flows off the Yellowstone Lake. Down in this is basically if you want to go to Bozeman, this is what you're gonna follow. Now, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, elevation 800 to 1,200 feet. So it's a very deep canyon, very impressive. Now, a little quick note on the hydrology of the Yellowstone River. This is going to flow down to the east, to the Mississippi. The Continental Divide does pass through the Yellowstone National Park in the southwest, um, kind of southwest of, um, of, Yellowstone, of Lake Yellowstone. So west of kind of that rim... Water flows out to the Pacific Ocean. East of it's flown into the Gulf of Mexico. So the last thing we didn't talk about before heading through the Green Canyon of the Yellowstone is Mount Washburn, which is off to our left on that ridge line. I'm not sure we can see it right from here. But that is a big fire um, lookout post. So they have a bunch of cameras up there. They uh, station people up there who are looking out for fires and um, other kinds of activity across Yellowstone National Park. So that's one of the big observation posts for park rangers, uh, and for tourists to come up and, and see. One final thing to note here uh, at the north end of the park. Off in the northeast is Lamar Valley. That's known kind of as the America's Serengeti, where you can see a lot of herds of uh, buffalo, bears, wolves, all sorts of really cool, cool things pretty regularly. So um, that's a really interesting spotting point, again, kind of farther up to the northeast. We're going to kind of track along the north to the west, north side of the park to the west, following the road. Now, if you want to go to Bozeman, Montana, you're going to follow the Yellowstone River straight up through that valley just off our north. That will um, eventually basically spit out into a larger plain, and you'll be taking a left hand over Bozeman Pass to Bozeman, Montana. We're going to follow the road here up towards uh, park headquarters in Mammoth Springs, before we head back south towards Madison River and head out through the west entrance. All right, so we're coming out here over the north entrance to the park and Mammoth Springs, which are some of the, it's like a cave turned inside out, is how I've seen it described. Basically, really impressive limestone 
uh, hot spring formations out on the um, out on the surface of the earth. It's really interesting. This is the north entrance of the park. We're going to basically fly back up the pass and then to the south towards um, back towards the Madison River. So we're coming into land. I have AI traffic turned on for some reason. Can't remember exactly why, but we've got a TBM in front of us. He's going to be coming into land before us. So we're number two. We're on the downward. We're going to try and extend and give him a chance to get off the runway. West Yellowstone traffic. Porter 63 Sierra Quebec turning ba left base for runway 19. West Yellowstone. West Yellowstone traffic. Pilatus 63 Sierra Quebec is on final land runway 19 West Yellowstone. Give it the last notch of flaps. We're in a big seaplane, so we're pretty draggy. We're still going to try and just touch the back nose, back wheels first. But keeping in mind that we're a bit higher than my brain is going to think we are. Looks like the TBM's off the runway. Do a bit of a crosswind out of the west. So we'll have to keep that in mind. We're a little high. We're so draggy, I'm not really worried about it. A little hard, so that's um, we'll see what the damage is on that one. But all right, so welcome back to West Yellowstone Airport. That was a good, fun flight. Good. All right, so welcome back to West Yellowstone Airport. That was a good, fun flight. Again, this is not a exhaustive tour, blow-by-blow blow of Yellowstone. This is really a familiarization guide to say, hey, these are the big landmarks, and there's a lot more, and uh, there's a wealth of information about them. So if you're interested in flying in Yellowstone, then this kind of treat this as a bit of a primer, and feel free to go deeper because, yeah, we haven't need, we've barely scratched the surface, but hopefully, we've given you a sense of the park and some of the interesting things to do there. If you have any questions, comments, ideas for other places you'd like to see, drop them in the comment section below. As always, this has been VFR. Take it easy, y'all.